Previously on the bill. Who's that? It's our new DC. Well, I didn't think we were appointing anybody for another month. Sometimes you question yourself. You know, carry on playing at being super cop because there's nothing else in your life. Get out of my office. So we're all done with this Richardson file? Yep, here it is. Updated, polished, spell checked, and ready to go. Excellent. Let's give it to the DCI. Hello, hello. Well, Stuart, don't. What are you doing? Oh my god. I believe you just did that. Come on, my stealth skills, covert rural operations, snap me up in a second. What did the DCI say about that report? Well, Mickey, says something along the lines of, um, well, you know, I mean, <laughs> this report hasn't been cross-referenced with the general registry. The statements are in date order and they should be nominal, so I suggest you go back, you re-index it, and when you've done your job properly, you can resubmit it to me so I can do mine. Yeah, I, I want an update of all outstanding warrants on my desk ASAP. Let's at least try and pretend this is a functioning CID. Jack. Sir? Can I have a quick word in your office? I think it's great to see someone in charge who isn't afraid to put in the hours. You've been working around the clock for weeks now. Take a day. You deserve it. Well, thanks for the offer, sir, but I'm fine. It's not an offer, Jack. What? It's an order. Go home and get some rest. Well, I'm needed here at the moment. Not today. You've got a good team out there, Jack. They can survive without you for one day, okay? What if something goes wrong? What could possibly go wrong? Cad has had an anonymous call about someone acting suspiciously around the Gurney Street Industrial Estate. Can you do deal with it? Person wearing dark clothing and a hooded top. Hang on. This was called in half an hour ago. Then I suggest you get your skates on. But it's a waste of time. The person responsible will be gone by now. When your inspector tells you to jump, PC Keen, the only question you ask yourself is how high? Well, when will we be getting off then, Mom? Especially when you come to work with a hangover. So you're asking for 543. We're at C, Gurney Street. There's an alarm going off. I think we're at a lockup, over. Oh, my head really doesn't need this. All right, come on, 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 then the whole place went up. And what's this Mr. Actor saying? He's the key holder. He said he came to check out why the alarm was going off and the whole place was on fire. That's all we've been able to ascertain. What on earth was in there? 
Well, that's it. Earth. The fire brigade reckon it was packed full of fertiliser, and that's probably what caused the explosion. Right, I'm going to pass this on to CID. Let them get on with it. No, it's not quite as simple as that. There's something else you should know about the fire. What now? Arson. Well, at this stage, that's the fire chief's feeling, but and I've got the lab boys down at the moment to confirm. And there's a witness? Yeah, a Rashid Akhtar is downstairs at PC Keen. What were the uniform officers doing at the scene? I'm sorry, have we met? Oh, sorry, this is DC Grace Dastry, this is Inspector Gold. Oh, Mum. Now, Grace recently joined us from the Specialist Crimes Directorate, Mum. Oh, a little bit of competition for you, Sergeant Turner. Anyway, two of my officers received an anonymous phone call about someone acting suspiciously in the area. It's all in the notes, OK? OK, thanks, Gina. Well, we'd better speak to this Mr. Actor. But first, Stuart, get yourself down there with Kezia, the A's with fire investigations and scene of crime. You think this is an arson, then? Uh, well, at the minute, it's an unexplained explosion with lots of questions to ask about it. Better tell a DCI as well. Let's see if they need a hand. What's the matter? That's the DCI's car. And that's the DCI. Is he going to be in trouble? Well, it depends what's happened. Mr. Actor? I'm D.I. Manson. This is DC Dastry. Do you want to come through? You told our officers you went to your lockup because you got a call from your security firm, is that right? Yes, sir. I'm the key holder. The security say the alarm is ringing again. I think that the alarm is not the best. What did you find when you got to the lockup? The door was open. I think it has been broken. I went inside and that's when I saw the smoke. You didn't call the police when you realized there'd been a break in? I thought it must be kids. Did you see any kids? Anybody? Mm hmm. Well, we received a call about a person wearing dark clothing with a hooded top acting suspiciously in the area. Did you see anybody matching that description? I told you I didn't see anybody. <laughs> there you go, it must be kids. Is there anyone who has a grudge against you? Me? Well, you're the owner of the lockup, aren't you? No. It's part of the garden centre I sold to my son-in-law six months ago. It was a wedding present to help my daughter, Sammy. What's your son-in-law's name? Arihant Kazir. He should be at work at the garden centre. You think whoever has done this is connected to my son-in-law? Well, we have to look at all possibilities. Do you know if Ari Hunt has any enemies, Mr. Akhtar? Not that I know of. Um, can I... Can I go now? What do you think? He's definitely holding something back at the end, though. What, his son-in-law's got enemies? Well, think there's a reason he might. Go. It's a 99% chance that the fire was started deliberately. Clear traces of what seems to be white spirit was used as an accelerant. Right, so we've definitely got a crime. All we need now is a motive. Well, I think I might have been helped there, Gov. Just contacted the British Transport Police and they ran a check on the address. Now, this lockup is connected to a garden centre in Epping Walk. The owner is... Harry Hunt Kazir. Yeah, how do you know that? Our witness is his father-in-law. He sold Harry Hunt the business a few months back. Well, does Mr Akhtar know that his son-in-law stands to make £50,000 from the fire that almost killed him this morning? Because Arahan Kazir topped up this insurance policy less than two weeks ago. Well, that'll be for the garden centre, not the lockup. Not according to the insurers I spoke to earlier. What does he keep in a lockup worth £50,000? Whatever it is, it's more than a few pallets of garden fertiliser. OK, you and Kezia do a background check on Arahan. Let's go and see what he's got to say for himself. Thanks. Is he all right? He's fine. They've just taken him to St Hughes for some routine checks. What happened? That's what we're trying to find out. Traffic were first on the scene and they took his statement. And? There are some discrepancies between Jack's version of events and what traffic have been able to prove. Discrepancies? Yeah, Jack reported that a man ran out in front of his car causing him to swerve. Not just any man, is it? A man dressed in full military uniform, a possible CO19 kit. What? You're beginning to see the problem. 
There are no witnesses who saw anything of the kind in the area. CCTV? Not that we saw. But I have got Dan Casper down there searching for stuff in the surrounding area. Hang on, what are we saying here? That Jack lied? Why would he do that? Traffic are saying the most likely cause of the collision is fatigue or possibly lack of concentration. Now, we all know Jack's been pushing himself very hard the last few weeks. He was breathalyzed at the scene and he was under the limit, but he did have alcohol in his system. Basically, they think he fell asleep at the wheel. So what are we looking at here? Driving without due care and attention? Do traffic think we've got enough for prosecution? Yeah, they do. Now, we all know how it works. It could start out as a simple prosecution where the most Jack stands to lose is a few points on his licence and a small fine. But if the judge believes that Jack lied and made up this uniformed man in order to cover for his own mistake, it'll cost him his job. Now, you need to find out what's going on here, Mickey. If this man exists, find him. Yeah, well, like I said to traffic, I was driving along 30 miles an hour and this nutter ran out in front of me. What, wearing full military uniform and covering headgear? Yeah, like I said, he was a nutter. He opened the door, looked at the warrant card and then legged it. Then some people turned up and called it in. End of story. Hang on a minute. What's going on? He and called me down here, Gov. It's really funny, but there's no trace of this fella whatsoever. There's no witnesses, there's no CCTV. Well, traffic saying that I lied in my statement. The super's put him off for a bit. I just think we need to get it sorted, that's all. Yeah, well, I didn't lie. Well, then I'll find him. Correction, we'll both find him. Guff, you've just been in an accident. Well, it's my career on the line here. I'm not just going to sit back. I'll sort it. You look like hell. You know what it's like. Sometimes you just got to let these things go. Well, not this time. I'm busy. Are you coming? Where? See if we can find this imaginary G.I. Joe. Mr. Kazir! I thought Rashid said he'd be here by now. Well, that's what he said. This place should be open. Or isn't more than a good plant buying time? Should have opened an hour and a half ago, according to this. Well, maybe we'll try it on. I think I'll have a look around back. Okay. Over here! Alive. Head injury. Looks like he's had a good kicking. Sierra Oscar from DI Manson. Right. Urgent ambulance required at the Epping Walk Garden Centre. We've got a male with severe head trauma. Received. Ariane Kazir. What's going on here? I wish I knew. One thing's for sure. Mr. Kazir has definitely got enemies. This thing missed my head by about half an inch. I was sitting there. Governor, I understand, but there was no sightings of anyone in a uniform. Yeah, there was one, mine. So I'm driving down here, right? He runs out. I swerve to avoid him. I smash into that thing. He looks in the passenger seat here. Do you know where he went after that? I think he ran down there. Must have been quick, though, to avoid all the curtain twitches. Governor! An army dog tag. G.I. Joe's real name, Craig Waterman. That's his army number. Right, let's go back to Sun Hill, check it out. Oh, I just love this part of the job. Hi, Mrs. Kazir. Your father was nearly killed in a suspected answer this morning, right before your husband was half beaten today. Well, that could be worse. Well, I looked up Arahan on the net this morning. It means one who has killed his enemies, which is kind of ironic given the circumstances. <laughs> yeah, hilarious. It's Indian in origin, apparently. Uh, I thought Mr. Kazir was West African, oh, and Muslim. Well, maybe his parents just thought it sounded cool. <laughs> Mrs. Kazir! Mrs. Kazir, DS Turner, DC Walker, Sun Hill CID. You mind if we come in? So, is this about the fire? What, you already heard about that? Yes, I came and told my daughter. Is there any news? Have you found out what happened? I was still working on it, Mr. Actor. If it's my husband you're looking for, he's at work. I'm afraid we're, we're here about Arahant. He was attacked this morning at the garden centre. He's in a stable condition in St. Hugh's Hospital. I can take you to him if you like. I'll just get my things. Ms. Kazir, 
You got any idea why someone might attack your husband? Wasn't it just robbery? Well, we don't know what the motive is yet, but... Um... Mm. Mr. Actor, everything all right? Because um, we heard raised voices before. Oh, Sammy, she got upset that I almost got myself killed this morning. <laughs> she says that I am reckless. <laughs> Daughters. And look, um, that's not a bootleg copy of The Lion King, is it? I don't know. I don't speak Arabic. Arahant does. Part of his uh, conversion, Arahant was not a born Muslim. He converted. He is a Wahhabi now. And they have strict rules about reading the Quran in its original language. Okay, Mrs. Kazi. I'm sorry, detective, but there's really nothing more I can tell you. One minute I arrived at the garden centre, the next thing I remember is waking up here. Well, your wallet wasn't taken, and the morning float was still in the till, which would suggest that the motive wasn't robbery, but personal. If there is somebody with a grudge towards me, it is without my knowledge. Well, what about your business? Mr. Kazir, you know your lockup was burnt down earlier this morning. What happened? Someone broke in, set fire to it. Two of our officers and your father-in-law were lucky to have not been inside when the explosion took place. Explosion? Is everyone okay? Yeah, everyone's fine, but it was close. Look, do you think there might be a link between the fire and you being beaten up? No, I can't imagine. Where were you this morning between 6 and 7 a.m.? At mosque, for morning prayer, like always. Why? Just routine questions. You took out a new insurance premium on the lockup a couple of weeks ago. Ah, here it comes. You think this was deliberate via big insurance payout? What do you keep in a lockup worth fifty thousand pounds insurance? Ari, Ari, are you all right? I'm fine. Calm yourself. What I was keeping in my lockup is no longer of any concern to anyone. It has been taken by the will of Allah. Actually, it was taken by somebody using white spirit and a match. And that's a crime, Mr. Kazir. But there's nothing I can do to help you. I'm sorry. Right, well, we'll be in touch. Thank you. This is getting us nowhere fast. We're we'll Stuart. So he had to check something out. Arahant's alibi to check out. He was at the Tesco Street Mosque from 6 until 7.30 this morning. Right. Grace. Where are we with the garden centre CCTV? Uniform are checking it as we speak. Okay. I get the feeling that Arahant is protecting someone. He knows more than he's saying. Yeah, but what? And why would he protect someone who beats him up or burns his property? Or both. Meet the real Arahant Kazir. Cover. I thought your background check came up blank. Yeah, well, I was looking in the wrong place, because Arahant Kazir is the name that he chose for himself three years ago when he converted to Islam. But I checked out his details on Crimin and with the DVLA, Arahant Kazir used to be known as... Kojo Leo. Yeah. Kojo Leo's got a sheet as long as a toilet roll. Yeah. Assault, armed robbery. Yeah, drugs trafficking too. I ran a check on that garden centre as well. Complete basket case, completely in debt, has been for years, even before he got it from his father-in-law. Why would Arahant want to buy a failing business, even if it was cheap? Maybe the business is a front. Maybe there's more in those bags than garden fertiliser. What about the assault and arson? Are the competition unhappy about the new boy on the block? No, this doesn't make sense. Arihan is a strict Muslim. Whatever he was before, dealing is forbidden. Well, maybe the religion's a front too. Anyway, it's not unknown for the happy clappies to dabble in the drugs trade. Look at the Provos in Northern Ireland. Look at the Taliban, for that matter. It's a theory, but where's the evidence? Well, when Kezia and I went to pick up Sammy, she and her dad were having a pretty big row. And when we told her that her husband had been attacked, she didn't seem too shocked about that. Now, I think this family either knows something or they suspect something's going on. Now, I want to bring Rashid in, I want to lean on him, and see if he coughs up something interesting. Okay. Let's go for it. So, Mr. Akhtar, you sold the garden centre to Arahant six months ago, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Was Mr. Kazir aware then that the business had significant debts? I warned him, yes. But he insisted that he wanted his own business. Well, why would he take on a failing business? What do you know about Arahant's life? I mean, before he met Sammy. I know he was in prison. And I got worried when Sammy told me this. But she assured me that he is a different person. What do you think? Sammy doesn't care what I think anymore. See, Mr. Akhtar, we found a substantial amount of Islamic literature and DVDs at Arahant's home this morning. 
What can you tell us about those? It's quite a collection. That they belong to Arihant. Okay, Mr. Actor, do you know any of Arihant's friends, or business associates? Not personally, but I know of them. What do you know of them? They are hard men, dangerous. So why were you fighting with your daughter earlier, Mr. Actor? She in some sort of trouble? She's not trouble. It's his fault. She needs to be protected. Protected from what exactly? His fundamentalism. There's no middle way with these people. His fundamentalism? Of course. I mean, all those books, those videos you saw, and hours on that computer planning God knows what, ordering more fertilizer than we need. Does he think I'm stupid? We're talking about the fertilizer at the lockup, right? He changed the brand to pure chemical. What's he planning to do with them? Mr. Actor, are you saying Arahant's a terrorist? Uh, I just want to protect my daughter. He's made a direct allegation that Arahant Kazir is involved in terrorist activity. Anything specific? Well, not as such, sir. He implied that the fertilizer stored at the lockup was intended for the purpose of making bombs. Fertilizer is also chemical based, sir, and there was diesel fuel found on site as well. Mixed together, these can make some pretty potent explosives. On the other hand, they are both substances you would expect to find as part of the day to day running of a garden centre. Neil? Well, either way, sir, it doesn't affect the job in hand. We've still got a suspected arson and an assault case to solve. So you're not going to bring our hand in? On what grounds? On the grounds there's a potential imminent terrorist threat, Gov. We don't know that for certain. And even if we did, we're not going to be stupid enough to let him know what we suspect. If he's building bombs, he's got to suspect that the net's closing in on him after the fire of the lockup. Now, sir, what if he panics and does something now? Neil's right. It is now call. Cool. I'll get on to the counter-terrorist unit, see what they have to say. In the meantime, we act as normal. We find out who set that fire and what connection it's got to the assault on Mr. Kazir. Sure. Gov, I've got the CCTV footage from the garden centre. Looks like Mr. Kazir's been telling porkies. Right. Well, either Arahant's injuries have caused temporary amnesia or he's flat out lying about not knowing his attacker. Arahant must have known that we were going to see this footage. What did he stand to gain by not telling us who these two were from the start? Why wait for us to work it out? Well, maybe he's buying time. Gov, look what he's wearing. Dark clothing and a hooded top. We need to know who this guy is and what's his connection with Arahant. Run this through the custody imaging system and see if we can get a match. Grace, let's go and see what Mr. Kazir has got to say for himself. Gone. You don't say. Apparently there was shouting between him and his wife, and then he just took off. This gets better and better, doesn't it? <coughs> Mickey. Yeah. Hang on. This was taken just round the corner from where the DCI just crashed. The traffic's in this? Yeah, I'm very sorry. Look, I haven't got to tell you how bad this looks. You better stall them then, Smithy. You know, I mean, we've already got evidence that there was someone else there. Well, then you need to find them and get them to make a statement, because I'll tell you something, that photograph, that is all traffic need to proceed. Again on. Here you go. Well, the MOD have confirmed that the army number we found on those dog tags belongs to this guy, Craig Waterman. Disarmably discharged from the army for drinking and striking a senior officer. Well, that sounds promising, doesn't it? Well, even better. His name's all over criminals. What's he got? A burglary, GBH, possession with intent to supply, arm robbery. Is there anything he's not been done for since he left the army? Well, more importantly, what's he doing wondering how to burglary in a uniform? Right, last known address. 64 Colby Street. Right, let's pay a soldier boy a visit. What's that? Oh, nothing. Paperwork. Craig Warmer, number 64. This is it. Anything? No. Your game. It's all right. Police. What can I do for you? We're looking for Craig Waterman. What's he done there? So he does live here then? Not anymore. I'm his uncle. Do you mind stepping inside for a quick chat? Yeah. Come around the front. So you're in the forces too? Falklands. Two tours of Northern Ireland being the highlights. What's this about? Those are Craig's. How'd you get them? We found him at the scene of an accident that we thought Craig might have been involved in. We just need to talk to him about it. Why? Would he be in any trouble? No, but it's very important to me that he makes a statement about what he saw. Yeah, I don't want to get the boy in any more bother. 
You've got this as his last known address. Do you know where he's living now? Yeah, he's got somewhere in uh, Mowbray Street. Oh, he fell out? I got fed up. When he was here, in bed all day, off his face. No life for a man. No life at all. Always in trouble with you, lot. And after the last time, well, he wasn't living here. That's for sure. Right, well, thanks for your time. What is it with kids these days? They never see things through. Got to see the mission out. That's what it's all about. So. Craig Waterman, I'm DCR Meadows with Son Hill. We need to talk. What is it? I'm busy. Do you recognise these? You should do. It's got your army number and your name on. What are you doing with my dog tags? You left them at that accident that you ran away from this morning. This is a wind-up, yeah? You guys are having a laugh, aren't you? But I haven't been outside this house all morning. Can you prove that? Yeah. Would this do? Now, I thought the point, yeah, of you lot sticking this on me was to keep tracks on me. I don't believe it. He's on licence. Well, I only got out of Nick yesterday. I'm hardly going to mess it up on the first night, am I? That's why we couldn't find him on Crimmage. So what about these, then? Don't you keep him in a safe place? No, nah, not me, mate. Hated the forces. That I've left all my old army stuff at my uncle's house when I moved that. He's the military nut, not me. The guy's got a fetish. If you should be locking anyone up, it's him, not me. Thank you, Craig. You set for my mood. The previous for assault and robbery. He's also done five years in Longmarsh for possession with intent to supply. I guess it was inside with him at the time. All right, Kazoo. Back to the drug war, Uncle. I don't think so. I spoke to the governor in Longmarsh. Now, Yusuf Mahmoud converted to Islam on the inside. Apparently, he was quite the firebrand. Ran a gang called the Soldiers of Islam. Now, I bet my house Arahan Kazir was in that gang. Well, it's all very interesting, Stuart, but it doesn't give us a motive behind the attack on Arahan to the torching of his lockup. What if it wasn't arson? What if the fire was an accident? Yusuf screwing up. Screwing up doing what? Making bombs. We know it was arson. White Spirit was the accelerant used. No, no. White Spirit could be in the bombs. Aryan's passport showed that he made several flights to Pakistan in the last year. His wife's family are Pakistani. Oh, I think we should get a warrant. I think we should seize Arahan's possessions. Now, I saw DVDs in there which could well be terrorist training films. Now, Mr. Akhtar mentioned a laptop that could contain names, contain potential It targets. could contain bad poetry and will have set off a nationwide alert for no so reason. So why has Arahan gone on the run, then, if he's this innocent victim like he claims? If we don't do anything, Gov, we could be looking at another 7-7 here. Or another stop, well! Yeah, Manson? Yes, sir. Superintendent, me and you. Sir? What do you know about Yusuf Mahmoud? Well, he's a suspect in this arson and assault case, sir. How come you know about him? I've just had a call from the counter-terrorist unit. Arahant Kazir and his previous name of Koja Laya have never been on their radar. Yusef Mahmoud, however, is. When Diaz Turner ran his name through the system, it was flagged at CTU's end. They want to know what exactly is the connection between Arahant Kazir and Yusef. Yeah, well, so do we, sir, but um, both men have dropped off the radar. Then do whatever it takes to find them. Sir. What's happening? What's going on? You can't do this! Sammy, listen to me. This is a warrant to search these premises under the Terrorism Act. You think we are terrorists? Right now, I don't know what to think. Grace? Yeah. I'll search. Okay, put your hands on. Hold on, Okay, quick search. Okay, come with me. You can take your hijab and heads off if you want. What have we got? Pretty standard jihad propaganda, girl. If unpleasant, but nothing illegal. Still less on a variant, yes, sir. We've put out an urgent alert, but there's nothing so far. Let's go. Have a look at this. It's a hidden file. It seems Arahant is a big fan of Yusef's particular brand of ideology. Sammy must have known something about this. Let's go. 
I don't know where he is. And even if I did, do you really believe I'd tell you? You'd kill him. You have these ridiculous ideas about him. How can I trust you? Do you know who this is? He attacked Arihant this morning. We also think he may have been involved in what happened at the lockup. You think Yusuf burned down the lockup? You do know him. Yusuf Mahmoud. He says he's a friend of Ari's, but he's not. He's not a man of his word. What's he done? He gave Aryan some money, but now he wants it back and more with interest. I thought usury was banned in Islam. He's not a man of God. He's a liar and a thief. He's also very dangerous. Look, do you think it's possible that Yusuf has duped your husband into helping him without you Why are you so convinced my husband's a terrorist? We found literature and DVDs glorifying a violent jihad. They are for study. He's also had several trips to Pakistan in the last few months. <laughs> He's been looking at madrasas. Islamic schools? I'm four months pregnant. Right, okay, well, I'm sorry. If the investigation has caused you any stress, but it's been somewhat unavoidable. It's a bit late now for an apology, don't you think? Excuse me, girl. Grace, why don't you take Sammy to the front office? Get a drink or something. You said my mood has been picked up at the airport. You reckon he's done a runner? Well, he won with the first time today. Why? Oh, it's not like he was going to nick him or anything. I reckon he must have recognised you earlier. Maybe he's got something to hide. He seemed pretty edgy when he came out of the garage. It's like an incident room. Look at this. Well, whoever Derek Riley is, Barry knows all about him. His daily routine. Why? I know, but look at this. I'm looking at that bullseye, it's nothing good. You guess that. That's just around the corner from where I had the accident. So maybe Barry hasn't done it wrong. Maybe he's gone back to finish off the job. What job? I don't know. Whatever it is he was doing before I nearly ran him over. What on earth is going on here? I don't know. But I think we need to find Derek Riley before Barry does. So Yusef Mahmoud's held his hands up to the attack on Ariane because he couldn't pay back the loan. But he denies all knowledge of the arson at the locker. Uh, Yusuf's alibi checked out to go Van Arahans. Right, well, we're back to square one, aren't we? After all these armed raids, after all these terrorist alerts. Well, we acted on the evidence that was available to us at the time. No, we've been looking in the wrong places all along. Rashid actors had us chasing shadows when we should have been focusing on the evidence. Listen, I don't get it. It's one thing to dislike your daughter's taste in men, but it's another thing to accuse your son-in-law of being a terrorist. What was he thinking? We need to go right back to the beginning, shift the focus, See if there's anything we've missed. Well, maybe we should bring Rashid back in. I mean, if he's the one complicating things, then maybe he's the one with something to hide, not Arahant. Rashid said he wanted to protect his daughter. Yeah, from Arahant. From us. He's been staring us in the face the entire time. Dark clothing, hooded top. I need to know. Have you found Ari yet? No, I'm afraid not. You see? There is nothing more we can do there. You know, let's go home. Let the police Sammy. do their job. Samika's here. I'm arresting you on suspicion of us. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defense. No, 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 no. This is wrong. Something we She's innocent. In court. Please. Anything you do say, maybe she might, might. It's over, Papa. Come on. 
met Arian just after he came out of prison. He was so quiet, so at peace. But my father never saw this. He would look at Arian and he was scared. Scared of his past, his beliefs, his differences. And yet, he sold Arian the business. Gave him an opportunity. It wasn't an opportunity, it was a trap. The garden centre was failing. It needed investment if it had any chance of succeeding. My father knew this and he still wouldn't lend Arian the money. So Arian went to Yusuf? It didn't help. We've been on the verge of bankruptcy for months. None of this mattered to Yusuf, he just wanted his money back. I begged my father to help us. And he agreed to give Arian the money only if I came back home. My father doesn't want his grandchild being brought up by somebody like Arian. You increased the insurance, didn't you? No. It was Arian who raised the premium. I saw a letter, 50,000 pounds. I never stopped to think why it was so much. What was Arian keeping in the lockup? Family heirlooms. Did you know? He told me at the hospital. I wanted to help him help us. Instead, I've ruined everything. Back up. We can always call Hate and get his opinion. Anyway, when push comes to shove, Barry's not going to do anything stupid. Hey, God, that's our man. Barry, it's the police! Hey, police, stop! It's no use running, Mr. Riley. Put the gun down, Barry. You didn't really think you stood a chance against me, did you? You know what happens now. Put that gun down. I have to finish it. No one escapes the shadow. Watch out for the gun, McKay! Hey, put the gun down! Oh, it's plate! Game over. Hang on, so you're saying it's a role-play game? We get a new mission every month and we have our own code names. Mine's... The Shadow. The Shadow? Okay, so it's a bit geeky, so there you go. Look, since I left the forces, I have felt Useless. Bored. I mean, suddenly, there's no purpose to my life. And this role-play stalking game fills the gap. It's called Find and Destroy. And I would have got him if you had now ruined it and you cost me 20 points. You left the scene of an accident this morning. An accident that you caused. Sorry about that. Look, I was meaning to turn myself in once the mission had been accomplished. Honest. The traffic police are trying to put me on charges of driving without due care and attention. Nobody believed me when I said there was a nutter in a military uniform. I didn't have lost my job because of you. Sorry. I've got to let like to know uniform called to say that our anchor Kazir just returned home. So you want me to bring the guy in? Uh, no, I'll go and see him later. How'd you get on with Rashid? Yeah, he's admitted to covering up his daughter's arson. So, the governor. I'm sorry. You, know, you were right, and I was too willing to go where Rashid was leading us. Well, don't worry about it. There's a sign in the Times. Guff, I thought you'd been in an accident. Oh, I wouldn't let a little thing like that stop me from coming to work. Smithy, do us a favour. Can you pass up this traffic for me? Yeah, I'd love to. What is it? It's a signed statement they may want to read before putting out their final report on the collision this morning. Courtesy of the Shadow. What happened here? We made a mistake. I'm sorry. Where's my wife? She's at the station. Arian, she confessed to the arson. Where have you been? Does it matter? I needed some time alone to pray for Sammy, for myself. You took my DVDs, my laptop. Yeah, your property was taken under the Terrorism Act. Terrorism. Like I said, we made a mistake. You'll get your things back. But not my wife? Well, she has committed a crime. She too made a mistake. Her mistake was marrying you. If you hadn't come into her life, she would have been with me now. 
Mr. Actor, I think you've said enough for one day, don't you? I told you nothing you didn't want to hear. No, you lied to us. And this is the result. It could have been much, much worse. No, you are very close. I've been charged with perverting the course of justice. You told so them I was a terrorist. You hate me that much. I knew you would take my Sammy away from me. Sammy made her own choices, Rashid. She refuses to talk to me. And now neither of us will see her for some time. Are you content? Please, get him out of my house. He's no longer welcome. Let's go. Seeing as you're disobeying a direct order not to work today, I thought you might as well break another rule. Cheers. That was an interesting day. Yeah, you could say that. I've read the statement. The shadow. <laughs> I think the game's the only thing he's got left. Reminds him of better days, I guess. Can't let go. He's not the only one. Sir? What's going on, Jack? You've been practically living in the office for weeks. Are you afraid to go home or something? You've got to keep your age, haven't you? You've got nothing to prove, Jack. That's when he started to get sloppy. Is that what this is about? You feel you're getting sloppy? Well, I made a couple of mistakes recently that I could have avoided. Zane going native wasn't your fault. There was nothing you could have done to prevent it. I didn't mention Zane. No, you didn't have to. The only mistake you can make is getting too caught up in blaming yourself for other people's choices. You're the best DCI I've come across, and I don't need you burning yourself out because you feel you have to make up for other people's mistakes. Is that understood? Yes, sir. Good. So go home and go to bed. That's an order. Time on the bill. I still don't buy Cindy being involved with porn, Gov. Why? Because she was a woman. She was no mugsard. She used her profile to raise some serious issues. Oh, right. So she was Mother Teresa. Excuse me. Ah!